I uh, am speaking on behalf of my colleagues at the St. Kitts Biomedical Research Foundation. And as uh, we all know, St. Kitts has uh, many unique qualities, uh, one of which includes the monkeys that inhabit the island. And uh, that is the reason for the existence of the St. Kitts Biomedical Research Foundation and the reason that the island is known for the quality of science performed. Um, we also know that the, the monkeys are terrible for our crops and gardens, uh, but they are an excellent resource for biomedical research. Uh, and this relates to the important shared biology between uh, the green monkey and humans, and we employ them uh, to study and advance therapeutics for diseases of the brain, uh, eye, ear, heart, and for other conditions. One thing that we do not do is uh, engage in direct uh, study of infectious disease, and this relates to the fact that the uh, St. Kitts green monkey is free of many of the uh, diseases that are common to primates of uh, Asian and African origin, and uh, as such, they are a, uh, a very biologically clean population, and we, we aim to keep them so, and for that reason, we have long practiced uh, safe primate research in which we are employing masks, gloves, and other appropriate uh, protective equipment and precautions um, to conduct the research that we perform at the St. Kitts Biomedical Research Foundation. Again, with a, a focus both on reducing risk of human to monkey transmission as well as monkey to human transmission. Uh, as we know, uh, the COVID um, coronavirus did originate from animals, most likely the uh, horseshoe bat. Um, and we also know that the coronavirus can be transmitted from humans to other animals, uh, notably dogs and cats, uh, which has been documented. What has not yet been documented is the actual transmission of the coronavirus from humans to wild monkeys or from wild monkeys to humans. Uh, we have, however, been in uh, close communication with colleagues at national primate centers in the United States where they have the biocontainment capacity to conduct live virus uh, testing, and they have demonstrated that the green monkey can be infected with the COVID coronavirus. Uh, these were studies that were performed um, under the circumstance of delivering large doses of virus directly into the airway of the monkeys. Uh, we do not know uh, how susceptible monkeys are in more likely transmission scenarios where uh, a monkey may be in proximity to a, um, an infected human. Uh, but I think it is safe to conclude that there is a risk of transmission um, from humans to monkeys uh, and uh, onward between monkeys and possibly back to humans. Uh, and Circumstances under which this might happen uh, here in St. Kitts could certainly include laboratory settings like our own, but that is exactly why we practice the precautions that we do. Um, other circumstances could include uh, situations in which monkey trainers are placing infant monkeys on uh, tourist shoulders for photographs. Uh, certainly that's not happening much now with uh, the constraints on travel, but that is a practice that should be um, revisited uh, not only for relevance to coronavirus, but for other transmissible diseases like tuberculosis. Uh, certainly consuming monkeys would be another um, route of direct transmission, but 
I'm, I'm sure most of you are, mo are concerned about the monkey that may be in your backyard picking flowers and fruit. Uh, and I think in that scenario, the risk is comparatively low. First, they are frequently at a distance beyond the, the range at which uh, airborne uh, droplets are spread. And secondly, many of the uh, surfaces that they may be in contact with will at one point over the course of a day also be in direct exposure to the bright St. Kitts sun, which is very effective at eliminating viruses by the intense ultraviolet light. Um, but as we know, uh, risk is relative, and uh, I think on, on the scale of risk, the likelihood of being exposed to coronavirus through a, a uh, contact with a traveler from Miami or New York is quite high, whereas a risk of exposure from a wild monkey is comparatively low. And to keep that risk even lower, uh, we certainly strongly advocate distancing yourself from monkeys. Um, we ourselves at the St. Kitts Biomedical Research Foundation do not uh, conduct uh, any testing of samples from our animals nor from humans uh, because we do not have that capacity. But we, what we are engaging in is uh, social distancing, uh, wearing masks, wearing gloves, uh, washing hands, and practicing many of the precautions that many of the rest of you are doing throughout the island to great effect, and we strongly encourage that. Uh, what we also are not doing uh, at the research facility is conducting live virus studies in which we are looking at efficacy of, of uh, vaccines or therapeutics, because again, we do not want to put our, our animal staff or the island at risk of exposure. But what we have been doing is supporting uh, therapeutic development uh, programs that are related to uh, COVID and can be conducted without that live virus component. And I, I think our ability to do that really highlights the value of the St. Kitts Green Monkey to science and society, uh, especially at times like these. Um, so I would, I would welcome questions on the matter, and thank you again for the opportunity to uh, speak to you about um, our safety here on the island as it pertains to the other species we uh, inhabit the island with. Thanks. I'll begin my report with, my, with our arrest statistics. As usual, I'm always pleased whenever I have to report that there are no arrests for breaches over the last 24 hours. This is a signal that persons are cooperating and complying more, which is the position that we prefer. To date, the number of arrests for the period of the emergency is 115. Today is day three of limited operation days for this week. We continue to see good cooperation in most instances, as the majority of persons are wearing masks and businesses, or rather most businesses, are enforcing the physical distance and hand hygiene protocols. Limited operation day ends at 7 p.m. this evening, and the nightly curfew begins at 7.01 p.m. We cannot overemphasize the need for businesses to close at a reasonable time to allow patrons and your staff to get home before the curfew begins. The nightly pre-curfew rush is dangerous and motorists are reminded of their duty of care on the road at all times. Hurrying to get home before curfew is not an excuse for breaking the traffic rules. As we go into another night of curfew, we remind residents that you are to remain at your residence. You are not to venture beyond your yard space unless you are an essential worker who is reporting for duty or returning from duty. 
or you are an employee, a med employee of the medical institution, like the hospital, for example, or if you are seeking medical attention, emergency medical attention, or of course, if you are exempted in writing by the Commissioner of Police. Thank you. The World Health Organization continues its robust global surveillance of the COVID-19 pandemic, reporting 3,679,499 confirmed cases with just over 254,000 deaths. In St. Kitts and Nevis, we have sampled and tested a total of 327 persons. 305 persons were confirmed negative, while 15 were confirmed positive. Of the 15 positive cases, 12 persons have recovered. To date, we have zero deaths. There are currently seven results pending. A total of 60 persons remain in quarantine, 56 in a quarantine in a government facility, while four persons are quarantined at home. Three persons remain in isolation and they are recovering. To date, 751 persons have been released from quarantine. I would like to take this opportunity to reach out once again to our medically vulnerable population. Individuals with uncontrolled hypertension, diabetics with persistently elevated blood sugars, patients with heart disease, which includes patients with heart failure and known coronary artery disease, renal patients, and patients who are immunocompromised, such as patients with lupus and rheumatoid arthritis should all continue to pay special attention to their ongoing symptoms and seek immediate treatment if they feel that they are not doing well. If you are experiencing any of the symptoms of COVID-19, such as fever, sore throat, coughing, runny nose, headache, diarrhea, and weakness, please stay at home and seek medical care. Patients with chest pain, chest pressure, increased shortness of breath, excessive swelling of the legs, visual disturbances, weakness of any extremity that is of new onset should call their general practitioner or 911 and get to the emergency room of the closest hospital without hesitation. Our aim is not to so Sorry, excuse me. Our aim is not to be so focused on the prevention of the spread of the virus that we neglect our COVID non-medical related emergencies. Our patients living with chronic illnesses should be vigilant, especially when they live alone. Make sure your neighbors and close family members keep in constant contact. If there is any hint of changes to their usual med medical status, they should seek help without delay. Maintaining the overall health of the people of St. Kitts and Nevis continues to be our individual and collective responsibility. Again, we say stay safe and stay healthy. Thank you. I, I want to highlight an area of concern to the NEOC. The 911 has received a total of 136 calls for the past 24 hours. However, 77 of those calls have been prank calls. 77 prank calls. That means we have a lot of time on our hands to do idle things. I want to make an appeal to all individuals who are carrying out these prank calls to cease from doing so. We are still, uh, dealing, we are still dealing with a pandemic and uh, I am asking you to please be guided accordingly. We thank the general public for their continued cooperation. However, 
I really, really uh, am passionate, sorry, that persons are taking time out not to adhere to some of the regulations, but to carry out such callous acts against individuals who are sacrificing their time and giving us professional service in terms of the telecommunications and the managing of these cars, and you are taking time to, to, to call them for pranks. Just imagine that by you taking one minute to make a prank call, that one minute could have cost someone their life. That's not right, and such acts we must condemn. The Compliance uh, Task Force continued their visits today. A total of 74 businesses were inspected and eight passenger buses on the West Line. I am informed that the business community are being more compliant. However, we see some challenges still with the bus being compliant. Uh, just today I received several WhatsApp messages from citizens, concerned citizens, showing me inside of the buses and the overloading of buses by bus drivers. And when, they, when the bus drivers are confronted, the bus drivers are stating to the uh, passengers that they have money to make. Uh, let, let's bear this in mind. We are dealing with a pandemic. And it costs more for someone to have to be treated in a hospital than a bus fare. Please be guided. The RSS plane should be in sync. It's tomorrow. That's tomorrow, Friday, uh, 8th May, to collect samples to take to CAFA in Trinidad tomorrow. We have received several requests for repatriation flight. One such flight is for seven Ross students, seven students from the Ross University who wishes to return to the United States via San Juan. And Two of the other requests are citizens of the Federation who are desirous of returning to St. Kitts and Nevis via the USVI. Those requests are presently being processed. The task force, the, the National Task Force today visited the Cary Brewery, the Harrow Sova, Cajola Cristado, and sink its brushes. Uh, there was a concern that we needed to engage this manufacturing sector, and hence uh, a delegation led by myself and Dr. Laws would have uh, engaged the managers of these plants. Uh, to date, we are pleased with some of the results, and we have advised some of these businesses that they are still uh, exerting gaps that are not in, uh, that are not uh, aligned with the uh, regulations. So therefore, we have asked them to do their best to ensure that they are compliant with the regulation. I want to acknowledge a concerned and appreciative citizen uh, who is a teacher who came to uh, the NEOC and uh, donated cash, a cash sum of $250 to be used to provide meals for the vulnerable. To that citizen and jolly citizen, uh, we say to you thank you and continue being a good patriotic citizen. I also want to highlight the commendations that Sugar City Rock, in particular Mr. Val Thomas, uh, shared with me regarding the professionalism of the compliance task force that visited their radio station. Uh, he stated that they were very professional. They provided him with guidance and their team with guidance as to the, th the things they need to do in order to be compliant. And to them, uh, Mr. Thomas and his team at Sugar City Rock, wish them a hearty thank you. And we also say thank you to you, Sugar City Rock, for carrying this program every day live on your radio station. I also want to remind the general public that we are closer and closer to the start of the hurricane season. And I want to admonish you to begin to prepare or review your personal plans, family plans, and equally so, 
your institutional or business hurricane preparedness and response plan. Please don't be left behind.